Hello everyone. I have a few more things to add to our general uh, announcements for our very first class. And so before we get started, I wanted to go over a little bit about the assignments and extra credit. And for that, I wanted to use PowerPoint slides. So let's dive into them. Okay, so you can see the class schedule for due dates and the due dates uh, the way Canvas runs due dates is from midnight to 11.59 p.m., 24 hours, so if the due date is Tuesday, it'll, it'll be up what a lot of people think of as Monday night, but technically midnight is Tuesday morning, and it runs all the way through that day and all the way until 11.59 p.m. at night. Okay, so... Oh, and they are minus only two points per class day late. Uh, so if they are due on Wednesday, and you don't turn it on Wednesday, but you turn it in the next Monday, then Thursday is one day late, and Monday is two days late. It will be four points off of 20 to start with. Okay, we're not counting Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because they're not class days. Okay. So, and uh, by the way, uh, as I said before, you are going to type your paper in whatever word processing program you use, whether it's Google Docs or Word or whatever. And then when you go into Canvas, you're going to copy the body of your paper or your assignment or your extra credit. You're going to copy all the words, not the file, copy uh, all the, the uh, paper and paste them into Canvas. Okay, don't copy the file, copy the text. And that will go into Canvas, and I will see it there, and I will grade it there, and you will get your grade in Canvas. It's nice. I kind of like it. I hadn't been using Canvas before. Um, I like the idea of students showing up for class and turning their papers in. Uh, and it sort of forces people to come to class. Sometimes people, if they turn it in online, they maybe skip class or something like that. And I was kind of a fan of typing papers out and bringing them in in person, but I'm getting to like Canvas. So maybe when I get back to in the classroom classes, I'll keep a lot of the Canvas stuff. But it looks like that's a little bit into the future, including our class, right? Okay, so we're going to start with a one sentence description of the film. Okay, no more and be concise. Sometimes one sentence is harder to do than three or four or ten. Okay, so uh, for Jurassic Park, genetically bred dinosaurs are accidentally let loose and rampage throughout modern day theme parks set on an island. And that's pretty good. I don't have to mention Je Jeff Goldblum. I don't have to mention who the director was, Steven Spielberg. It's just a one sentence description of the film, what they call a log line. And that's the sort of thing that you might see on Netflix, or you might see on Amazon, or you might see in an old-timey TV guide, okay? A, a log line. They can be fun, too. Uh, here's one. I, I don't know where I found it, but I love it. The Wizard of Oz. Maybe you know The Wizard of Oz. Transported to a surreal landscape, a young girl kills the first person she meets, and then teams up with three strangers to kill again. All right, that's pretty good, and it's kind of funny, and it is concise and it is accurate. So if you want to be a little cheeky, that is fine with me. But being brief, that's the key. One sentence means you use one period. Okay, if there's more than one period in your one sentence description, it's more than one sentence, isn't it? What is the theme or themes of the film? It might be a story of self-discovery, like uh, The Wizard of Oz, something like that. It might be teamwork. Uh, like Seven Samurai, it might be What is Truth uh, in uh, some films. There's all sorts of ways to attack that, but it's short. This is not the whole essay paper. I know you have written papers in high school on themes, and they go on and on and on. This is going to be maybe three sentences, maybe four sentences. It's not long, okay? Three or four sentences, two, four or five lines, something like that. That's the theme. Inciting event is what gets the story in motion, okay? What starts everything off, okay? So that's it. 
it happens early in the film, doesn't it? Because that's what's going to have to start everything off. It might be somebody took a wrong turn, or it might be uh, somebody, who knows what, right? Who knows how the story all starts off? I guess in Jurassic Park, it would just be uh, that um, uh, that the dinosaurs are accidentally set loose because of the, the storm and the power outage and all of that. Okay, so that's the inciting event. Starts it all off. Tropes. Now, these are fun. Uh, in... Horror films, uh, there might be thunder and lightning and mad scientists and castles and all that. Those would be tropes. Gangster movies, the rise and fall of gangsters and so on. So you're going to go online. You don't have to come up with this stuff. You're going to go online. You have to go online. Okay, You're required to go online. There's a good one at tvtropes.com. There are others, other places, and you're going to look them up. Okay, And they're kind of fun. Really, they're kind of fun, especially the ones on tvtropes.com. So don't worry about understanding or figuring out what tropes are. I want you to go and I want you to look them up at minimum of five. Number them right down the left side of your paper, one, two, three, four, five, on the on flush left, okay? And uh, and list them, right? And maybe a quick example. Don't, don't just put, um, you know, uh, uh, beauty in the beast. Okay, I need more than that. I need more than that. I need the example. So it'll probably be a sentence rather than three words. Okay, a sentence more than, uh, rather than three words or something like that. Then you're going to stay online and you're going to do some more research. You're not going to tell me where you researched your tropes. Okay, that, that, that I, I know that you've done that. This is different. This is a whole different topic. More research, trivia, goofs, something like that. I don't need the box office. I don't need how many Oscars it won. We want more research like in Some Like It Hot. It took Marilyn Monroe 27 takes to say her one line in the film. Something like that. Something that sort of opens up the movie, makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, maybe the movie was shot in 30 days. Maybe it was shot in three years. Uh, with The Lord of the Rings, they shot all three movies back to back and then they edited them separately okay that kind of research something that sort of uh, uh, illuminates the rest of the film and opens it up a little bit again this is very short two three sentences four sentences something like that not a lot but research that you find online what is unique about the film does it have a framing device? Does it have a nonlinear plot? Does it break the fourth wall? Something like that. Is it shot in black and white? Is it stop motion, like Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs? Okay, uh, or King Kong, for that matter. Okay, what about the editing? Is it all done with no visible edits, like 1917? Okay, so uh, that is unique. That is unique about the film. Find something that is unique and talk about it in a few sentences. Don't just say it's in black and white. Okay, we need a little bit more than that. Okay, it's more than a sentence. It's, it's two or three sentences or three or four lines or something like that. And then uh, you're going to talk about the ending. Does it end with finality? A lot of films end quite finally, right? The end. They end. They lived happily ever after. It's pretty much the end. But there are some films that kind of, uh, like Inception, like Inception, that, that little thingy is still spinning, okay? It's not really a final ending if you've seen Inception. It kind of leaves a little bit open, okay? And there are lots of movies where, where it's sort of like life goes on, okay? It just, it just it goes on the next day. Sometimes it ends. They're, they lived happily ever after. There's a, a wedding, something like that. So talk about that. Does it end with finality or to be sort of like to be continued? And talk about it a little bit. Give an example or two. Don't just check the box, right, to be continued. There's no boxes to check. But don't just write it's this or that, right? You need to, um, you need to uh, write just a little bit about it. Okay. And then your personal opinion. Did you 
enjoy the film or not, and maybe list why. You don't have to like all these movies. They're famous, 2001, The Graduate, whatever, Frankenstein, King Kong. You don't have to like them. That's okay. You have to understand that there are important movies in, uh, in the big scheme of things, okay? But you don't have to like them. So if you don't like them, that's okay too, okay? Next, let's talk, uh, and this should all come to a little bit more than a page in your document. So you're going to write up a document, just like you would that you'd print it out and turn it into class. You're going to write up your document, but you're going to copy and paste all of the text, and you're going to paste it into Canvas, and I will read it online in Canvas. But you're going to write it on, on, a, on a, a document first. Okay, so... We have extra credit, five points. You can do three extra credit papers, okay? And like I said, any combination, but no more than three. So it could be another paper on approved list. And I also put in experiences, okay? So you can go out. Hollywood is still open and so are drive-ins, okay? So you don't have to. If you don't want to leave home, that's okay. You don't have to leave home, but if you want to, you can go to a drive-in. Drive-ins are still open. That's how we're going to be probably watching movies through the summer or for another, for a while anyway, is, is drive-ins. Okay, so you can go to a drive-in, and I have a list of them. You can go to Hollywood. Hollywood's still open. Okay, you won't get chased away. You can walk around Hollywood if you want. Most of the stores will be closed for a little while. Actually, I think they're starting to open. So you can go to Hollywood, look at the stores, all that kind of stuff. You probably can't see any movies for a little while, but you can walk around Hollywood. It's quite fun, and you will see this complex right here at Hollywood and Highland. And this refers back to a movie that came out in 1915 called Intolerance by D.W. Griffith. I talk about it in my early film history class, but not in all classes, but that's this is ancient Babylon. Okay, and that's what this refers to. And then these are just shops and everything. Parking is down down below here somewhere. There's not much parking in Hollywood. Uh, street parking, almost very little street parking in Hollywood, but your car will be plenty safe at the underground uh, parking structure right here. And this is right in the middle of Hollywood, right where they do the Oscars and all that kind of stuff. And right next door, you will see the world-famous Chinese theater. It was built by a man named Sid Grauman. So people like me sometimes think of it as Grauman's Chinese Theater. That's how it was called for 50 years or so. And there will be references to Sid around, and you will see that. Uh, in the courtyard here, there are uh, squares of cement where movie stars have put their handprints and footprints. Uh, there might even be a horse print. I don't know. Maybe there's a famous horse uh, with, a, with, a, with a horseshoe in there. I think R2-D2 uh, and C-3PO and a few odd things like that are there too. And it goes all the way back to the 1920s and all the way up to uh, Star Wars and Harry Potter and stuff like that, Marilyn Monroe. A lot of people have their handprints and footprints in the sidewalk. It looks like that. This is Humphrey Bogart. He was a big, big, big movie star in the 1940s and 1950s. He played a tough guy in film noir, thus the Till I Kill You bit. And Sid is Sid Grauman. Okay, so Humphrey Bogart, 1946. And those are his handprints and footprints. And you can see if your hands are as big or small or whatever have of these movie stars and take pictures and all that kind of stuff. It's really kind of fun. And then all up and down the sidewalk here are, is the, is the uh, Walk of Fame, the Star Walk of Fame, and they look like this. Okay, so you can find your favorite movie stars. Uh, they actually have movie stars, TV stars, and recording stars, and I think radio stars. I think that's a separate de designation for radio, maybe a, a DJ as, a, as a, uh, opposed to a recording star. And this part goes way past the Hollywood, uh, way past the, uh, uh, the Chinese theater. It's about a mile or two 
Okay, so you'll see it on both sides of the street uh, right there in Hollywood. And that's kind of fun too. And then uh, across, or inside, sorry, inside the Chinese theater, if you can't go in, that's what it looks like. Uh, it, they called them movie palaces. They built them in the 1920s for the most part to, to uh, bring the middle class in rather than the lower classes. Movies were pretty cheap. Nickelodeon's only a nickel and so on, and they wanted to have bigger movies and charge more money for tickets and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they put in... Uh, they put in these big, beautiful palaces so they could maybe think about dressing up, okay? Just like going to the theater or a concert or something like that. So movie theaters back in the 20s were trying to uh, kind of raise their game, right? And make it kind of a special uh, a special thing, like, uh, like going to a, uh, a theater or the concert or something like that. Across the street from the Chinese theater is the Egyptian theater, also a Grauman Theater. They did a few in LA. And if you go down this, this sort of alley thing here, you will see uh, the Egyptian Theater. Note, note that they're themed theaters, Chinese, Egyptian, there's a Mayan theater, and so on. They were independent. They weren't part of, of big theater chains like the Warner's chain or the Fox chain of theaters or anything like that. And uh, also in that neighborhood, directly across the street from the Chinese theater is the El Capitan. Um, it was bought, it wasn't built, but it was bought by the Disney Corporation, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, something like that. Uh, but it was built in the 20s, but not by the Disney people. And now uh, Disney uh, can show any of their uh, plethora of, uh, of uh, films, whether it's a Lucasfilm or a Pixar film or a Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Okay, they have a lot. They're Muppets, they own, they, they own the Muppets as well, plus Disney, plus all the Disney stuff that they, that they have. So they, they showcase their films uh, at the El Capitan and it's kind of cool. Uh, once it opens up, it is a fun place to go. A lot of times on weekends, they put on stage shows, dancing, things like that, exhibitions, uh, inside the lobby, costumes, things like that. So uh, that's the El Capitan. I'm not sure when it'll open, but there it is. And also relating to movies are drive-ins, and drive-ins are open, right? They've never closed. You are socially distanced when you're at the drive-in, so if you're going to see a movie today, that's about the only way you can see a movie, and I'm not sure when theaters are going to open. A lot of people are thinking of July, okay, and I hope uh, when I show this video in the fall that this will all be past tense and we'll all be back at the movies again because I'm not going to record this every semester. I'm going to reuse this and repurpose this, so I'm hoping that, uh, that this whole idea about uh, movies and uh, all of that is in our past, but uh, right now, as I speak these words at the end of May 20, 2020, uh, movie theaters aren't quite open yet here in Southern California, but you can go to drive-ins, and there they are, and there's the addresses, and they're all online. Uh, I think they're all open, um, and uh, but they were never closed. They, they, were, always, they were always okay. Drive-in is a fun place to go. You see, uh, some people have backed in. Okay, there's the screen, but this car is facing us. And so people are lying down and that they've opened up their hatch there and they're lying down in the back. The big uh, vehicles usually are in the back and smaller vehicles, they ask to go up front. Th this might be blocking somebody's view if we're too much further forward. And uh, also, it's hard to tell, but pickup trucks will also back in and people will put lots of, of uh, padding and bedding and that sort of thing in the back of a pickup truck and, uh, and pillows and all that kind of stuff and you can, you can sit in the back of your pickup truck. There is a, a, a maybe a five or six inch mound so uh, you would normally put your two front wheels up on the mound and then your car is sort of tilted upward a little bit. You can tilt your seats back. You want to get the most comfortable vehicle you have uh, since you're going to be sitting there for a couple of hours. Okay, so hopefully it's nice and big and comfortable. 
you will hear the sound through your FM radio. They will tell you which uh, uh, location, frequency to tune your FM radio, and you can hear on your FM radio. You can crank it if you want, or you can turn it down and make comments and talk through it. It's your choice, right? It's your choice. It's kind of fun, just like the online class. You can hit pause, anything you want. You can't hit pause there. Uh, but uh, you can talk, and turn the volume up or down, or whatever you want to do. Um, most of the drive-ins have three screens, and the snack stand is kind of in the center, like the hub. And everybody from all three theaters, in essence, go to the same snack bar. But they have uh, nice stuff. They have uh, uh, burritos and tacos and hot dogs and uh, more than just popcorn and, and, and Coke and candy. Uh, and you can bring in anything you want, right? You want to go to Subway, you want to go to Pizza, whatever you want to do. They don't care, right? You can bring in as much as you want um, and uh, or buy stuff from the snack bar and that's where the restrooms are and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, as you can see here, and here a really classic one from the 1950s, they will start the movies before it's all the way dark. Um, the days get pretty long uh, in June and July. So um, it won't be all the way dark like it, like it would be in a movie theater. So. The beginning, uh, some of the trailers uh, uh, becoming attractions, and the first part of the movie might not be as dark as you'd like. So that is one of the downsides. The, the upside is usually you see a couple of movies for about $9. So it's a very good price. Huge screen, a couple of movies for about $9. Um, they got very popular in the 1950s with the rise of uh, the baby boom and families and all that kind of stuff. And families could... Uh, bring their little kids in and they can cry and scream all they want and they're, they're in a car and they really don't bother anybody. So it's not like, like taking infants uh, or even squirmy little kids into a movie theater. And so this is a real popular place to take families and of course teenagers and young people uh, alone in a car. <laughs> so uh, a, lot of, a lot of young people probably never even saw much of the movie. I'll just put it that way. Uh, so it is fun. You can pretend that you're back in the days of, of uh, Grease or Hairspray or Rebel Without a Cause or whatever and uh, watch a movie. And uh, I've had this extra credit uh, availability for a long time. And every single student loves the experience. Every single one loves the experience. So you're just writing a half a page. Okay, I don't know how many words it is, two or three hundred words, something like that. But you're just writing about a half a page about your experience. And you don't have to write about the movie, just about your experience and, and so on. Uh, just like the uh, Hollywood experience. And at some point, there are some museums up in Hollywood. I think there's a fashion museum and a makeup museum. And there's going to be a big academy museum that's going to open up uh, not until the end of 2020. So, um, uh too bad for us, but th there will be a big uh, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Museum opening up uh, near the County Museum, but not, I think, until the end of the year. And so uh, uh, all us movie fans are going to be looking forward to that. Also, um, George Lucas has a museum that's going to be opening up on the campus uh, at Exposition Park, where the Natural History Museum is. Maybe you went there in school to, uh, to see that, where they have the dinosaurs and things like that, and Arboretum. And uh, it is the, I believe it's the Lucas Museum of Narrative Arts. I think that's what it's called, Narrative Arts. So stories, so they're going to have stuff on movies, but they're all going to have stuff, also have stuff on, uh, on uh, illustration and painting and, and other things. And it looks like a spaceship. It looks like it comes from George Lucas's Star Wars Galaxy. And they're building it right now. Uh, and I'm excited to see that too. So we have two new museums opening up. Probably not in time for our semester, but hopefully in future semesters we can go off and see some of these cool new museums. So uh, that is it for extra credit. I uh, hope you... Um, have fun. I, try, I know you're already going to be writing four papers, and I thought, well, instead of writing five or six or seven papers, maybe they have uh, movies, maybe there's something else, right? So I tried to find some experiences 
uh, rather than just watching more films. But you're welcome to watch more films too. You're welcome to watch more films. You can only do three extra credit. Okay, three extra credit. And five points each. Okay, uh, there we go. You are ready to dive into the first class.